Hello everyone, I am Talonhawk, and I'm here to bring you some Heroes of the Storm strategy. We're going to be covering the Dragonshire map, it's the first map we're going to go through. This is one of the best maps, in my opinion, to bring you a strategy ride, as it's one of the simplest. But before we even go to any kind of strategy on any of the maps, one of the first things I'd really like to iterate that players really need to focus on more that I've seen is not dying. Staying alive is one of the most lacking talents that I have seen in most of the Heroes of the Storm games that I have played. I know it doesn't seem very penalizing at the beginning because of the short respawn timer that you have, but the experience that the enemy team gains from it is not worth it and can lead to a level difference. Not only that, but learning not to die gives you better concept on how to engage in team fights, when to engage in them, when to retreat, and kind of how much you can really push yourself. I would say in a typical game, you know, two, three deaths would probably be, be about norm. You're getting into five, I would say five to six deaths is the max amount of deaths you should have in any game. And that's kind of pushing it towards the high side. If you're getting more than three, you really should focus a lot more on keeping your hero alive than you should be worrying about a whole lot of what's going on around you. I mean, and if you do that, that's going to give you a better concept on how to play the game overall. Now, in Dragonshire, there are two shrines in the upper part of the map and the lower part of the map. The team's focus is to try to capture both shrines and then you can go to the center of the map and activate the Dragon Knight, which is a nice, big, considerable, beefy, bossy character that can rush you towards your enemy's encampment and take down towers. On this map, another big thing that I see that people do that needs to be corrected is that people go in, they get the Dragon Knight, and then they start attacking the enemy heroes. And you shouldn't really be worrying about that. Besides the kick that the Dragon Knight does, your primary focus should be on the structures. That's what he's there for. He doesn't really do that much damage to other heroes. He gets a damage buff towards towers, and that should be your main focus. You see through here, we got both towers. It's time to head to the center. Now, normally, you want to preferably not go for the Dragon Knight unless it's clear of enemies for the most part, but they're ignoring me, so I hopped in there and I stuck it in anyway. Now, if someone's trying to do this, though, it's important. You don't need more than one person trying to get the Dragon Knight, and it goes with any objective on any map. If someone's trying to get it, then everybody else needs to try to zone for that person so he can get it. And it's not so much now as it was in the earlier stages of Heroes of Storm. But you used to see multiple people trying to tap the shrine or trap a node on whichever map. And it's just to no effect. You're, you're just better off letting one person get it and everybody else zone for that person to keep the enemy players away from it, so you do get it. Now in this map, getting the Dragon Knight is optimal, but really a bigger focus is not letting the enemy team get it, which may kind of sound kind of like the same thing, but it's not. And when it comes to Heroes of Storm, there's a few things that you really need to have a handle on when it comes to your progression. There's the main objective of the map, which in this one I consider 
one of the most important things you need to focus on. There are your Merc Camps for capturing that helps with your lane pushing and then there's just straight out lane pushing yourself if you have a hero that you've built designed for lane pushing. Now for the most part in Dragonshire, uh, now the, after getting the Dragonite or somebody getting it, the next most important thing is going to be getting your Merc Camps. It depends on the map. A lot of times I usually like to try to kind of get my Merc Camps around level 4, but it's not really imperative of what level you do it. I mean, there's some heroes that do right off the bat at level 1 as soon as they spawn, which is a few seconds usually after the game begins and your first creep starts spawning. But here we are. I'm going to focus on the hard camp here. I'm going to try to jungle as much as I can, which jungling is just getting the Merc Camps. And until the Shrine becomes active, I'm really not going to worry about too much of anything else. I mean, it is semi-important to have somebody in every lane gathering experience. And in this game, I, we tend to have an experience lead, for the most part, if I remember correctly over the opposing team for the majority of the game. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're winning. I have played several games where I was behind two, three, even four levels and I was still confident that my team was going to win just because of our ability to stay focused and be on the objectives. Because the, the objectives and getting towards your enemy base is the primary focus not leveling, or enemy kills, or just lane pushing, or just smart camps. One of the biggest abilities you really need to try to get a grasp on if you're having trouble in Hero Scorn, on top of staying alive, is paying attention to your mini-map. The mini-map is going to tell you more than anything else in the gameplay. For example, on the mini-map, I can see that Illuminator is coming. I got the Siege Tank. Not only that, but the top shrine's capped, so I'm not really too worried about getting this capped right away. And now that nobody's going for the top, we have the bottom. We killed the siege tank. Nobody's probably really going for it. And we got the dragon knight. I mean, it's it's all this stuff coming together that determines what you need to do next. Which, for me, in this instance, is to go to the center, go to the dragon knight, push. Push the lane as far as we can. Now, since I'm not the Dragon Knight myself, like I stated before, my primary focus is going to try to get the enemy teams off our Dragon Knight Knight so we can get as much damage done as possible. And then... One of the reasons why I call this one of the simplest and easiest to learn strategy map is because for the most part, you can pretty much focus on the objective, or as I stated in my opinion, focus on not letting your enemy team get the objective, which you'll see examples of why I put it that way more than I do getting it. And then it's smart camps. It's Maybe you have an option where you have a very good lane push with your mercs following them up. Put our Dragon Knights down. Merc camps are getting ready to spawn. I'm going to go back and heal up. And uh, I'm pointing at some stuff. I really don't know what it is. I, going down, I'm going to start capturing Merc camps. Another one just popped up. As you come down, you're going to see the enemy, or some others of my team are going to pick that up, so I'm going to continue down to the bottom. You're going to see a few... Um, hey, look, it's my phone. You're going to see a few uh, oddities in this game and this commentary because I, I did this game while trying to comment. It wasn't good. In fact, it was, it was horrible. So I'm doing a voiceover of the gameplay I already did because I wanted to keep the same gameplay. This was the first one I tried and it ended up being a really good game. 
I had a really good team, and the enemy team wasn't very good, to be all honest. And it's not that the enemy team was bad individually, it's that they were bad as a team. They, for one, they died a lot, they didn't come support each other a lot, and there's a lot of times you can see in here where they left the dragon shrines alone at the top of the bottom map where they could have easily tapped one or the other or zone the middle to try to keep us from getting it. Now there's a merc camp pushing and we have the bottom shrine as you can see by the mini map. So I'm going to make the decision to go in and stop this hard camp from getting too much of a push which is going to be extremely important. Now, if we didn't have the top or the bottom shrine, or I couldn't see that my team was down at the bottom shrine defending, I would not have probably gone to defend this push. The reason why I did it is because I saw that we had the capacity to keep the enemy team from getting the Dragon Knight. And now as they got the bottom, we got the top. So, you know, it's still safe. I'm, so I have time to finish off this hard camp. One good thing about my slam wheel stitches, when, especially when it comes to uh, lane minions, is that I can almost one-shot them. So I can throw in one slam, leave, and that will push my lane. At least to the next little encounter like you see him up there. Now the enemy is going for the top and the bottom. They have both shrines, but our Nova is down there to stop that cap. So I'm going to go back up towards the top. I'm going to capture the top shrine and hopefully one of my team will get down to the middle and be able to get the Dragon Knight as it pops up. Another thing to kind of realize on a map, almost, I think it's every map, if I'm remembering correctly, but if the Dragon Knight would pop, and you still see Merc heads on the mini-map, that's because that means somebody on the enemy team is attacking it. And it will stay active until you either go in there and kill the enemy team, or they cap it, which I would recommend going in and trying to zerg them down while they're trying to cap a Merc camp and get it for yourself. Because normally that's a good time, especially if you happen to have the Dragon Knight yourself. Now here we are, we have the Dragon Knight again, and this is going to be a pretty nice push. You can tell right now because they have two up top, I'm not sure what they're doing up there. They must be uh, trying to push our creep back, I would assume. We have one of our own going to stop their push at the bottom which gives the three of us here a good chance, the four of us, I'm sorry, to push right into their main base. And they're, they're two, three, or whatever there is up there trying to push in our base, they're, gonna, they're so far behind, I, pushing at this time isn't really a very good idea. They should all be down here defending. Especially pushing without a Merc camp while the Dragon Knight's up. It's just, this is not a good idea. So where we are, if we can get this uh, last fort now, that's going to pretty much give us a nice free clear path to the main part of their base, which we didn't get it with the Dragon Knight. We both have one player each dead. So it's probably getting to the point where we're going to need to retreat. Now we have two down. We got Diablo. Diablo is usually a kill that you want to try to get anyway because, especially if they're going for a super tank build, losing his soul stone is about as good as you can get. But now we're getting to the point where we really need to get out of here. We're almost overextending ourselves, which is easy to do, especially on the, the better games. 
now the Dragonite's down, so it's time to do some Merc Camps. We have three up now. We have one Merc Camp pushing at the bottom. Here's Gazlo trying to zerg me down again. <clears throat> he likes to, uh, well, he got it. Here's our Dazzle now coming in. So they'll be able to stop this push before it even starts. And I think they get the Dazzle, but I'm not sure. The enemy one. And as you are, so you can look here now that the, I got the screen up, you know, when you're looking at that, it's not just about the person who has the most hero damage, but it's about having a nice, good round amount overall number hero damage, siege damage, and healing, that all comes together to accumulate your total effectiveness, effectiveness and worth to the team during the duration of the game. There are still three Merc Camps up, no, well, two Merc Camps. The Shrines are active. I can see that my teammate is going to the top. That's one of the reasons why I promptly decided to go straight to the bottom. And after securing the bottom, hopefully we got somebody already starting to go mid. Actually, we got somebody getting ready to jungle the hard camp, which is a really good idea. Now you can see that there is an enemy at the top, and I believe they get the Dragon Knight this time. Which, having a game that's gone this long and have this be their first Dragon Knight, it's not a game breaker. And there it is, there's their Dragon Knight. So we're all going to center up and stop the push. It's going to be our primary concern. Now our front line part of the forts were already down. So they have just the two buildings to plow through before they go to hit the next gate. And if we stopped them from getting through the next gate, we definitely came out ahead. We've got two of theirs down, and they're still over here pushing, which is kind of weird because they should be retreating. But I prefer they don't because I like to win. There goes the siege tank. He's down. So now we have four of their team down, or is it three? four. We have all five up. This is the perfect time to start juggling. You know, in some instances this would be a really good time to push, but we're all kind of low, low in health and a straight out push with uh, no creep up there really ain't going to help you too much. So you're better off to get juggling, picking them all up before they pop up, and that's going to create enough of a diversion to help us get the Dragon Knight, because if they ignore it, then we got a pretty good push coming from all the sides where we've captured Merc Camps, which is right now all of them are on the bottom. So this is probably going to make it to where one person can go to the top on the next uh, Dragon Knight and get it by themselves, and we can push the bottom end to keep that area defensible. <clears throat> the Dragon Knight's coming up in 23 seconds. You know, that's another thing about this map. You know, the timer's nice, 
it doesn't mean that you have to get there right as the end of the time hits. I mean, it's just not necessary. You know, as long as you're there at time to keep anybody else from getting it, that's all that really matters. It's time to come down here and, and cap. I've got the bottom. I've had no resistance. I'm going to go over here and see if anybody's there. And there's Trande. She's going to try to stop our push. Like I said, it's a nice distraction. Now here I'm overextending myself a little bit. I really shouldn't be following this far in. Probably, probably not a good idea. But it is uh, keeping the bottom open on the shrine that I've captured. And now the top shrine is crapper. Now I'm just stalling. I mean, no matter what I do, as long as I keep them off that shrine, we're going to get the Dragonite, which there it is. Now it's time to get out of there. Diablo has a lot of... Uh, I shouldn't even be in there swinging this. That's just a total mistake. I should have got out of there a long time ago. Anyway, our Dragonite's up. We're going for a push. We'll probably get to their core on this push. They, we both have one down. I'm going to pop sooner than their other one. They have two down now. So this is going to be a fairly nice push. If we had more creep going towards their tower, this would be the last push, but I don't think we have enough creep. I don't think we have any creep actually pushing their tower right now. So, getting the shield down and getting as much damage done is about the best you can really hope for. I mean, realistically, it's really the best time to get out of there. There's two Merc camps up. It's time for somebody to go over there and need to start jumping. That would be the optimal thing to do right now. It looks like I was going to go for the uh, hard camp right at first, but I think I decided to go push for the core because they had so many down and some of my team was still there, but uh, uh, probably would have been best if I would have went straight for the Merc camp. Gaslow's down. He got down to 44, but that wasn't worth a death. And I'm going to go ahead and head out of there, and I'm seeing that guy's low heading up to that hard camp, so I'm hoping that I can gank him. But having so many people up right there at their base, that probably that's not the best idea. But I have a couple friends inbound also. Here I'm overextending on the gas though, but one of the reasons why I keep pushing is because the Nova's behind me. And here comes Illidan. And we have a little team battle here. And the Dragon Shines are going to be active in a few more seconds. Unfortunately, we don't have any Merc Camps pushing on them to really distract them a whole lot, but at this point in the game, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable we have enough to leave, even with two down. Our is getting ready to pop. We're securing the top shrine as we speak. I'll probably head down to the bottom, and then we'll get another Dragonite, and one more Dragonite will end the game. That's, that's about all we need. And also with uh, the top shrine activated, also wouldn't be too bad of an idea for somebody to jungle if they have the time to squeeze it in there. So there we go. Oh, nope, we missed it. The enemy team was just able to capture the top shrine right before we could capture our Dragon Knight.
So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna head top, and we'll try to secure that. We got both shrines. Oh, nope. Yep. Yeah, we got both shrines. And next will be to get the Dragon Knight. And then at this point, whether you go in jungle, it's it's kind of debatable. I'm gonna go do it, especially since we lost the shrine and I was on my way to the middle. So I'm gonna get a night camp. I'm gonna let them push top. They got a camp pushing at the bottom. And we're gonna stall it, but the hard camp probably going to do more for us at this point of the game than what an easy camp will. One good thing about the hard camp is that it does a pretty good job on the enemy minion lanes and it pushes the lane farther than the easy camp does. The easy camp is better for destroying the towers from a distance. So it's not that one's better than the other, it's that the bird camps serve a different purpose. Okay, now the enemy has the top and bottom lanes, but we have somebody down at the bottom getting ready to try to secure that. Here comes Gazlo, thinking he can get a gank off me again when I'm almost majority of my health. And then he walks in the middle and tries to cap it with <laughs> no health. He should have ran a long time ago as soon as he saw the older. 2v1. Not a, not a good number to be having. We have the bottom shrine. We are going for the top. We have two Merc camps pushing, two lanes pushing. And we have the Dragon Knight. This is game over. There I go, I put a slam in on their creep, push them back, let ours push forward. Every hero kill we get right now is really important because the cooldown timer is so long at this point in the game that if we keep them dead, then they're, it's just it's game over, which this is game over. I mean, they have three down. There's their Nova that she's just standing there like, Ugh. and there you go. And that's it. That's my Heroes of Storm gameplay for you guys. We won. Uh, leave any comments and questions you have below, and I'll be glad to answer them. And until next time, all the best.